Welcome to today's webinar. My name is Andrew Eilers. I will be going over today's topic of new 3D bevel features in Sigma S version 20. Uh, as you may already know or may not know, um, in version 20 we have added a 3D feature for 3D beveling um, to make it easier for more complex beveling. So today we'll be going over that um, as far as the setup, uh, some features that were added, and kind of just a broad overview of the new feature. So today, um, the topics that we'll be covering is an overview of the 3D bevel, um, kind of what it looks like, uh, the look and feel. Uh, we'll be going over the qualifications for 3D beveling, so what we're looking for for customers or users uh, that will be using 3D beveling. Um, it isn't for everyone, um, so it'll have some features that will be great for some. Uh, for others, uh, it won't really change anything, and 2D beveling will still be fine. Um, we'll talk about some changes that come with the 3D beveling, so some different features, different looks, um, and other features that were added to a company, 3D beveling, um, one of which is the rule manager, so we'll be introducing that um, and what that will entail. Um, so just an overview of that, that'll include um, features such as ramping, corner loops, and lead-ins, all that pertain to 3D bevel parts. Um, then we'll also go into the 3D bevel view and programming. So built inside the software, we'll actually be able to see our parts in a 3D model, um, which we have not done before, um, as well as programming in 3D to make sure that our tilt and angles and all that information for our 3D bevels uh, come out properly. So an overview of the 3D bevel. Um, 3D beveling is a new Sigma S feature for version 20, so that is the first version that it is in. Um, this will uh, utilize our 3D engine inside of Sigma Nest. There's a lot better control for transitions, for swarfing, um, and it's quicker for programming more complicated bevels. Um, so if you've noticed that you have been having issues programming certain bevels, such as blind bevels, um, or want to use the ability to swarf, so eliminating corner loops and items such as that, uh, this is a great feature for that. That's what uh, the purpose of the 3D engine is for. So from 3D beveling to 2D beveling, um, the 2D beveling interface in Sigma S is still fully active and supported. Uh, so we're not going away from the 2D uh, functionality. So simple bevels like your top knife, bottom knife, K bevels and all that stuff um, on a single side of a part um, with corner loops um, is not going away. Still very easy to use, um, don't have to worry about that going away. Uh, but with moving to 3D beveling interface, um, it does require uh, post modification, some setup, and some additional training since there is uh, more features. Uh, it can be very beneficial for some users, um, but may not be a, um, useful to others. So just making sure that you realize what the uh, benefits are um, and whether or not they're going to benefit you um, is very important. Um, if it is something that you do want to try out, it is recommended that you come in with the expectation that there may be some changes or um, a couple adjustments that may need to be uh, done. Um, and if 2D beveling is working for you and you're not having a lot of issues such as like blind bevels um, or your machine's not able to do swarfing and eliminating corner loops, uh, then 3D beveling is probably not meant for you. So users who will benefit from 3D bevel, uh, users whose machine can program their rotor and tilt angle uh, and that thus swarf around edges or eliminate corner loops. Um, if you don't have this ability to control your rotor or tilt angle on your machine, um, then this is probably not going to benefit you whatsoever because you won't be able to use um, these features inside of the software. So knowing what your machine is capable of is definitely the first step that we recommend making sure that you're able to do before trying to go down this road. Um, users who are extensively using NC by profile to program your bevel parts in Sigma Nest. So if you do realize that you're doing a lot of manual programming uh, in part mode in Sigma Nest instead of just clicking a contour or a profile and saying this is a top knife and then letting auto and see handle it from there um, then this is definitely going to be a benefit for you there's a lot of features uh, that make um, nc by profile um, not needed as much 
Um, you still have the ability to do so, however, it's not needed as much with the 3D capabilities. Um, the last benefit is users with more complicated bevel parts that are not interpreted well by the 2D bevel interface, um, such as um, some of our blind bevels, um, anything that requires swarfing or would benefit from swarfing. Um, in this case, we may require a 3D part to import. Uh, so with the 3D beveling features of the software, we have also included the ability to extrude the part in 3D into a 3D interface um, and some of the more complicated bevels, um, as we'll see throughout the webinar, um, are not able to be extruded and will require a 3D interface. And we'll actually use that 3D interface or 3D parts such as SOLIDWORKS or STEP files to bring into the software and we'll actually save that information um, and that representation of the part. And that way Sigmanest, um, since it's not able to extrude some of those more complex interfaces, um, can compensate by using that 3D uh, part instead. So there are some changes that come with a 3D bevel. Uh, parts and workspaces that are made with a 3D bevel machine um, will also, when you save your part, will be saved as a PRX file or a WRX file. Um, this will save the structure of the 3D model. So whenever we extrude the part into a 3D model, so going from 2D to 3D inside the software, um, we'll actually save both the PRS, which is our normal part file, as well as a workspace file, um, as well as a 3D version of that workspace file. So one thing to keep in mind is that your file um, structure uh, may get a lot larger by saving both of these. Now, you do not have to save um, parts in a 3D format if they don't have beveling on it um, or do not require 3D bevel. So if you do not apply a 3D bevel or have the software extrude that part into a 3D bevel, um, you don't have to worry about the software saving those file formats. This is exclusively for anything that has been extruded into a 3D model. Um, one thing, other thing that has been added is a new purple bevel balloon has been added for 3D importer parts uh, with bevels that 2D Sigma S cannot extrude. So in the image we see right there um, on this part, it is a, a jagged tooth part um, and has a very complex contour on the right side of it with the jagged tooth section. Uh, and you'll notice that the bevel balloon on this um, is purple. Uh, if I have a normal bevel on this part um, that Sigma S can extrude, so let's say a top knife on the straight cuts on the left side of the part, uh, that is something very simple that Sigma S can extrude the 3D model of. Um, that would be a yellow or orange balloon um, that you are more than likely used to seeing. So we'll go and head into the software and uh, take a look at this part in particular um, and some other parts and uh, see what that looks like as far as importing a 3D model. All right, so now that we're in the software, let's go ahead and import our parts. Um, so as I mentioned, uh, we can import 3D models and import uh, that information from the 3D model for those more complicated bevels uh, or contours that Sigma S can't extrude. Um, so for example, that um, shark tooth or um, jagged tooth part uh, that we saw in that uh, last slide there. So we're gonna go ahead and import our step files. So step files uh, we can have in a 3D format. Um, as long as they're in a 3D format that is not uh, bent um, and is in a flat pattern, uh, we can go ahead and import those into the software. Um, if you do have anything that has any folds in it or needs to be unfolded, uh, we do have an unfolding module uh, that you can utilize for that. Uh, or if you have the SolidWorks importer or any of our other 3D importers, we can utilize uh, those 3D formats as well. So I'm going to go ahead and just highlight all these different parts here and go ahead and bring those in. Um, so these are just uh, regular step files, nothing uh, too different about them here. Um, so we'll get our part parameter window that'll pop up like our normal parts that we bring in. And you'll notice that the uh, bevel uh, bubbles are appearing on these parts. Um, so as you'll see, I have two different colors. I have the uh, purple that I mentioned for those more complicated um, parts that have um, beveling on them and Sigma S cannot innately extrude those. And then we have our traditional um, orange bevel bubbles um, on some of our parts for bevels that we can actually um, extrude inside of Sigma S because they're not uh, that complicated. So let's go ahead and take a look at our um, 
beveled uh, teeth um, part here. Um, and you'll notice it does have that uh, purple bevel balloon on here. Um, note, if you do make any changes to the geometry of this, either by um, editing the geometry or adding a bevel to one of the other sides, it does change the um, part and it does have to re-extrude. And because it was not able to extrude this right side, it will not have the bevel on this side if you make any changes. So for these complicated parts, just make sure that you um, have everything drawn inside of the part um, prior to making any changes. So once it's brought into Sigma Nest, there shouldn't have to be any changes as far as making another bevel on another side um, or changing the geometry of the part. So we do have this 3D view of the part. So let's go ahead and click on that and we can actually see the bevel on here. So as you can see, this new window will pop up. Um, this is built into Sigma Nest, and you can see that we have uh, this odd beveling on the side of this part um, where the teeth are at. And so um, this is geometry that has been saved from the step file. So when we import in the step file, it keeps this information and that's indicated by uh, that purple bevel balloon there. All right, let's go ahead and uh, continue on to Rule Manager. So our next topic is going to be the rule manager. Um, like I mentioned, this is something that was added in version 20 uh, to accompany the 3D beveling uh, portion of the software. Uh, this feature is only going to apply to parts that are assigned to a 3D bevel post. Um, so a post that has been adjusted to work and produce code um, from that 3D interface. Um, the rule manager allows you to set specific conditions for your leads, your transitions, and ramping. Uh, so this will actually replace the lead-ins on your part. Uh, so if you go to part parameters and the lead-ins that are in there, uh, this will actually take over for that if the post is set up for 3D uh, usage with your beveling. Inside of here, we can actually set up specific lead-ins for uh, certain materials, certain thicknesses, certain process parameters such as amperage. Um, you can get very specific on the type of uh, conditions you want to use. You can actually even use uh, the angle that you want to um, apply or the previous contour angle um, or the next contour angle that will end up happening and that'll determine what kind of lead-in you'll use. Uh, we can actually apply those same specific conditions to the transitions, um, so our corner loops, as well as ramping. So we can actually control and have better control of ramping um, and our speeds, uh, depending on where we're transitioning from, um, the type of lead-ins we're using. So we can get a lot of control, and there's a lot of specific things that um, you can control in here. Uh, you can set them to be very broad um, for all of your parts or you can be very specific. Uh, so just as a note, um, as I mentioned, this does replace your lead-in um, options uh, inside of the part parameters. So you will want to make sure that you do set these up uh, for any part that has the 3D beveling applied to it or uses the 3D uh, post. Um, so if your post is upgraded to a 3D version, you will have to make sure that you do um, add these lead-ins in here so you do have lead-ins on your parts. So let's go ahead and hop in the software and take a look at Rule Manager. So hopping back in the software, uh, one of the buttons that you'll see up here at the top, um, so we just went over with View in 3D, um, is our Rule Manager. So let's go ahead and click on that. So what this is going to do is bring up our Rule Manager. Um, so this is going to be for, in this case, we're on a Flow Water Jet, um, depending on what uh, machine you'll have, you'll have um, different sections in here. This is just a water jet, so this happens to just say default water jet. So over here we have our different options. We have our lead rules, our transition rules, and our ramping rules. Um, and as you can see, we have a couple of them already set up um, inside the software. Uh, these are some of the, just the defaults that I have already set up, um, but you can decide to use these um, or make your own. So we can actually see, we can also enable or disable um, different, um, in this case, we're on the lead rules. So we can disable or enable uh, different lead rules. We can also set priority. So for instance, if a material or a part happens to meet two different um, conditions, so let's say that it meets uh, the conditions set for this first option and the second option, 
um, then this priority will take over and then decide to go from there uh, which one to use. Um, so if you want to have it even more specific on which one it will use, you can set that here. Uh, furthermore, if you do have everything set to one, in this case, I have everything set to priority one. Um, let's say that the top and the second option both meet the criteria uh, for the part um, and they're both set to one. It does go in order from top to bottom. So in here, um, we can edit our lead-ins. We can add a new um, condition. Um, or we can actually look at our leads. So the leads button is actually going to allow us to select uh, what kind of leads we want to make. Um, so these are our different options in here that have already been made. Um, we can add more from here. Um, what we can also do is add a new condition or a new rule. Um, so we'll select on our uh, condition that we want to change and we'll hit this pencil button to edit the rule. It will ask um, what kind of lead in and lead out we wanna use. So we can look through here and choose which one of the lead on options we have. We can just say that we want a straight line lead in. Um, we can decide that we do not want to lead out. Um, we can add a gap size if we have a lead out. Um, we can also choose the position of where this is going to be placed. Um, then we can add our conditions. So this is at the top, this is the type of lead-in that we're gonna use, and then we can actually decide which um, condition we wanna use. So one of the nice things is that um, on um, inside of Sigma Nest, uh, we have the ability to control internal and external contours um, and the different lead-ins there. Uh, however, we don't really have a lot of control as far as um, what kind of contours and we can actually be very specific on those type of contours so an arc contour we can have a different lead-in than a straight contour um, and so forth um, we can also determine um, based on material thickness and process parameters so I can add one in here for material I can hit this drop down and say that this is for mild steel um, and then if I want to add another condition so mild steel when I um, have a certain process. Right now I'm on a water jet, so I don't really have a process that I would choose. Um, everything will end up using the same process, but for instance, if I was on a plasma, I could choose which amperage um, and go from there. And then I can continuously add more and more rules um, going from there. Um, we can also um, choose what the first edge do type is, whether or not it is a line or an arc or a splined line. Um, so again, for instance, for those contours that have arcs um, on the internal and you want to use an arc lead-in um, on those, but you want to use a line lead-in on contours that are straight um, inside of an internal contour, we can actually decide to do that there. And then once you make your changes, you can click OK and go from there. So let's actually just go ahead and choose a lead out and then click OK. Moving on to transition rules. Um, again, we can go in here and we can choose what type of transition that we're going to use. Um, so we have a V to V, so a top knife to a top knife. You can name these whatever you like. Um, this is just the naming conventions that we typically use to determine that we're going from a top knife to a top knife. You can flat out type out top knife to top knife, whatever is easier for you so you can actually sort through this. Um, and then the type of transition. So we can actually, again, make certain transi transitions like we could for our lead rules. So we have different options for a lead in and lead out. We can go inside of our transition and actually go ahead and create our own transitions. Um, so if we decide in this case that we wanted a no corner loop, we can do that as well. So bringing this over, we can add a transition. Um, we can add um, tr uh, our rules in here as well. Um, so we can decide to choose which type of transition. So we have a line step triangle. So this is your normal kind of corner loop here. We can say no corner loop. We can do an open corner loop. So this guy right here. Um, we actually do have um, images on the left side based on the um, options that you have. So we have different transition rules. We can actually specify the angle. So if we're going from um, one angle to another from the first contour to the second contour, uh, you can define X right here. A would be your first contour, um, and then your B would be your um, last contour of what that angle would be. Uh, you can set your lower and higher limit as well. 
uh, we can go in here and determine which edge. Um, again, we can go based on material and thickness and process parameters. Uh, if it's a blind bevel, what kind of transitions do we use? So we can actually get very detailed on what kind of transitions that we want to use. Again, you can just set one um, for everything. So let's go ahead and hit cancel here. Um, and we can just do our normal corner loop or we can apply a uh, no corner loop option. Uh, ramping uh, is the last one we have. We can set our different types of ramping. Uh, so we can go in here um, and choose what type of ramping. So we can do copy from an existing ramping rule um, or we can start our own blank one. Um, and then we can set up different variables in here such as the length for the ramp up. So every 0.197 inches uh, will start to ramp up 10%. Um, as well as ramp down if we need to ramp down. So depending if we're ramping up or ramping down, this is the percentage that we're changing, uh, and this is every single um, increment of what we're actually going to ramp up that amount. Um, we can also determine which radiuses get um, ramping on them. Um, so if it falls below this value right here, um, then uh, the ramping will uh, not be applied. Um, or on larger contours, we can apply those on there. Um, we can also specify a minimum as well. Uh, we can also specify the min possible feed rate. Uh, so you can actually put an equation here of um, this can only be a third of the feed rate. Um, so you can really specify what the minimum and maximum is in here. So as far as rule manager, those are the different options in there. Um, there definitely are a lot of options in each one of these different categories. Um, so it is very important that if you do decide to utilize the 3D feature, um, that you do take this into account. Um, if you only use one option or one type of lead-in um, for that part or material thickness, um, then you can just set up one thing and make it your um, end all be all for every single option inside of the software. Um, but this does give you a lot more control as far as um, the particular contours, um, the angles, all of that stuff, um, far more than what we were able to do inside of just your regular part parameter lead in. So um, this definitely might seem overwhelming at first. However, once you get it dialed in, just like when you're setting your defaults for your lead ins, um, you can just set it and then not have to worry about it unless you add a new material or want to add a new condition. So now that we set our rules, um, now we can actually move on to NCing our part. Um, now the auto NC and the NCing and the part mode is only required um, if there are some changes that you want to make um, with the 3D model. Um, if you already set up all your transitions and the part, if you can auto NC it in part mode um, without having to change anything, um, that NC is actually going to apply to the part inside of the task. So you don't really have to uh, NC every single part. If it's a generic part, um, that can be done in 2D, such as a um, top knife or bottom knife that goes into a straight edge or anything like that, um, then having to auto NC every single part in part mode um, is not really required. However, if you'd like to, to make sure that you have full control over your parts, you can definitely do so. Uh, if it's something that you're used to doing, then you can continue to do so. So inside of part mode, we have our auto NC um, options. Um, we can also tab our bevels as well. Um, we can adjust independent lead-ins. Um, so if we have a top knife or a bottom knife um, with a land, we can actually control uh, the individual lead-ins for the land as well as the straight cut. Um, we can also do a breakpoint management. So like if we're doing a blind bevel, um, what we can end up doing is control the head to stay at a certain um, angle to a certain point and then proceed to switch to the angle um, as it moves into the part. Um, and then we can also control our transitions, such as our corner loops, and as well as our cutting order, just like we can in part mode. Um, we can also adjust ramping. Um, we can do uh, cut quality changes. Um, if you have cut quality set up for different contours and, um, and items like that, or if your post is already set up for 
um, quality control. So let's go ahead and hop in the software and take a look at what this looks like. All right, so now that we're back in the software, um, we went over the rule manager, we went over quickly the 3D view, um, but one of the things that will get added and is the driving force behind um, actually controlling the cutting of parts like this that require 3D beveling um, is once you have the 3D bevel post enabled and all those different options and everything set up, we can go ahead and hit our NC button just like we would in part mode normally. Uh, once our bevel is applied and we'll actually have this 3d interactive window or this checkbox will actually open the 3d um, option um, so we have this part here that you'll see that we have some beveling on the exterior um, with some sort some sort of scalping into the part um, as well as a straight cut on the interior so when we actually in see our 3d portion of the part we'll actually only be in seeing um, the exterior because the interior does not have the um, bevel applied to it um, currently um, and then once we get out of the auto NC that we'll see that applies NC to this part um, the only reason being is that um, the 3d view is primarily for the beveling portion uh, so it's not needed to apply this and this can use the regular 2d engine of the software to do a regular um, circular cut so over here, uh, the first thing we're going to do is NC. Um, we do have the option to NC by an edge or NC by a contour, or we can go ahead and let the software actually take care of that. Um, there's very few times I've personally seen that we've needed to do more manual options, um, but if it's something that you're used to or want a little bit more control um, over the cutting order or where it starts and so forth, we can do that. Um, then we have a couple of different options. We can um, round our short corners, uh, merge collinear, uh, lines we can have it auto do our corner loops so automatically applying our corner loops based on um, piece of information so like our angle and stuff like that um, this part in particular will um, coincide with our normal corner loops so our um, triangle looking corner loop we can define what a sharp angle is um, our edge uh, tessellation uh, tolerance um, our orientation type um, so we'll go in this case we're going to go along the profile direction um, and then extrusion angle tolerance so um, it's a plus or minus on the angle um, of the extrusion uh, since we got this from a uh, 3d model it should be very accurate as far as the extrusion of the part so we'll go ahead and click ok and then you'll see that it'll actually go ahead and auto and see the part again we won't do the internal because that'll be done inside of sigma nest once we click done up here in the top left um, but the exterior contour because that has some bevel entities on it we'll go ahead and and see all of that um, if for instance we were doing a square and only one side of the square had a bevel on it we would still do the whole entire exterior contour just because it had um, beveling on one side and it'll require us to use the beveling option. So as you can see, we have our corner loops on our different transitions here. Um, we can actually go ahead and adjust lead-ins. So if we wanted to adjust this lead-in, we can do so. Um, so edit, we can clear all the lead-ins, we can move it if we wanna choose a different starting point. So if we wanted to start here, um, instead of going on the straight edge, we could do so. Um, so again, a lot of these features are going to be very similar that we would have in part mode. Um, we can also edit our transitions. So we can actually come in here and select our transition. So I'll select that corner loop right there. Um, it'll tell us our transition angle, our start bevel angle, um, the bevel type, um, and then what it ends on. So it starts at a top knife and then proceeds to go to a simple um, contour. So this is just a straight cut at that point. Um, the uh, start geometry is a line, so we start on a line here and then end on an arc. So what we can do in here, if I decide on this, I do not want to do a corner loop. Um, what I can do is choose one of my current transition options that I have made. So I have a no corner loop as an option. Go ahead and click OK. And it'll actually go ahead and get rid of that corner loop. So when we actually process this, it's going to process it in a way that it will swarf to this corner instead of doing a corner loop. Um, the benefit of this is to save material because we're not having to cut out those corner loops. So we have very particular control on items like that. Um, we can apply feed rate and ramping on certain contours. So if we want it to go faster on certain contours, we can apply that there. Um, we can uh, split a loop into two different sections. Um, we can also add tabs uh, manually or automatic. 
So if we want certain positions on our beveling contours or contours that have beveling on it, we can apply that there. And we can also break an edge. So for instance, if uh, we are going um, into this uh, corner right here, uh, and let's just pretend that this is flat, and then this section back here is beveled, what we can actually do is tell it to at a certain point, so maybe like the midpoint right here, to start to switch to this angle that it's gonna need to do this um, beveled edge right here. We can do our straight cut, and then at the midpoint, go ahead and switch to our angle, go in, and then again as we come out, um, switch back to a straight um, angle and do the rest of this contour at that straight angle. Uh, and then we can also simulate in here as well. So if I wanted to do a simulation, I can actually simulate it. It will show the machine head inside of here. Um, I can hit my play button and you'll actually see it do all of the tilting. It'll give you the information of the different angles um, and such in here. Um, we can edit all of this information individually um, through our um, 3D bevel window in here um, by either um, changing NC with our auto, changing our leads, our transitions. Um, we can customize the orientation of the head. So if we wanted to um, orient the head in a different orientation, um, we can do so as well, as well as change our ramping and feed rate in here. Um, as you can see, as it goes through, it will um, adjust the head based on the bevel. So we do our transition to our corner loop, transition to our bevel, go around, and then we go to our opposite direction, and then we just switch into our final transition here without doing a corner loop. Um, again, this is gonna be only for machines that can handle swarfing like that to eliminate those, those corner loops. So what we're gonna do is go ahead and click Done. You'll notice that um, once I have it in seed, um, so it's gonna flicker a little bit, it's gonna NC the part just like it did in, inside of the 3D view. So you'll see that there's no corner loop there. Um, and then we have our bubbles in here and you'll notice that it applied the NC to the internal hole um, of the part and it does not need to be added after the fact it automatically does it for you. All right, at this point, I'd like to thank you for watching today's webinar. If you have any questions, please let us know by either asking them now or by asking our support team at 513-595-2002 or emailing us at our support email at support at uh, You can reach us via the support line, as mentioned, or through the email, as well as our Connect site uh, to log a case or look for other webinars that we've done in the past. All right, thanks. Have a great day.